Here we got the engine hanging on the hoist. You can see simple hitch receiver welded to it, 8.8 .8 bolted to it. Uh, really beefy arm and the baddest hook around. Um, yeah, I think that hook is just awesome, all stainless steel, so cool. Um, yeah, so the engine's hanging. I'm gonna do a little maneuvering and kind of poke it right into the garage. But, uh, you know, this thing is pretty ridiculous, I, I have to say, but, you know, I was kind of brainstorming with my dad and my brother about, you know, what could this thing become? And there's just kind of this consensus on, you know, why not make it into a trailer? So I did, and it unbolts from that frame, so it goes right back to being an engine hoist when you need it, but when you don't need it, it isn't a, you know, 800 pound monster that can only roll around on perfectly smooth concrete. So pretty cool, um, I think, you know, it's ridiculous, but look at that. My back doesn't hurt. It picked it up off the deck of the trailer and it's gonna drive it right where I want it. And you know, you can hook it to anything that tows. I mean, I wouldn't take it down the road. I didn't build it rugged like that, but put putt around the yard, pick up an axle, move a little engine, all the way. Okay, so I made a hole in the garage, put the Jeep on casters, spun it around. It was an absolute press fit. Um, <laughs> it was, that's how wide a Willie's Jeep is right here. Um, then back this crazy contraption in. I'm gonna set the engine down right here just for now. Um, and then go through it in the garage so that I can make sure it's ready to go. And then when I'm ready to, to strike, the old one's gonna come out. I'm gonna have the fenders and the grill off and everything, and this engine is gonna go in. So yeah, here's the another just look at the Jeep. It's had some time to dry. It's still a little damp, it's been real cold. Um, yeah, it's crusty, but they make all the panels and whatever. Um, so this guy's gonna come in, it's gonna spend the night, and then I get to think about what I'm gonna do with the rest of this um for the short term but uh probably take it apart make it small you know smaller pieces and then uh you know come up with an actual plan for that okay setting this down nice and easy Okay, so now here's the, here's one of the things that I love the most about this setup, this Cranston Eagle hook. Like I said, it was intended for a single point davit. Um, Solace, you know, safety of life at sea. If you're a, if you're a sailor, you know what that is. Um, it's uh, special gear and regulations to try to help uh, sailors in when the worst happens. But um, this hook, is uh, able to release under load. So let me see if I can, uh, it's not under load now, but the idea would be, you know, you got a, a lifeboat that's going to the water and you're in heavy waves. Maybe you need to drop it, but you don't have time to you know, pull a shackle. It's loaded, you can't do it. So this guy right here, you just give her, give her a good, and it drops. It'll unload that shackle while it's loaded. And uh, just gives you flexibility if you're at sea. Um, I think it's cool as hell and um, <laughs> I've been waiting for a place to put it. It's absolutely overkill for this thing. It takes a foot off my lift height, but you know, I don't care. I think it's just the coolest thing. All right, so I'm gonna start taking the front part of this Jeep apart so that I'm able to get access to the engine and to the other stuff around the, the front. Um, a lot of this needs work, so I figure the best way to go about this is probably just take the fender off, take the take the grill off, and then and then I'll be able to really get after everything. And I can address any weak points in the fenders that are there, which obviously there's some some spots that aren't so good, so it seems like a good opportunity to get in there. All these battery cables are rotten and terrible.
So the battery box on this Jeep is completely gone. So a piece of wood down there. Um, but on the parts Jeep that I got, parts Jeep, it's a frame, but it actually has a battery box. So that's, that's handy, you know, that's the type of little things you don't anticipate when you buy a pile of parts. Yeah, so there was my battery tray, pine board. Yeah, better nothing, but, you know, I'd like to do it right. So, let me see. I'm not sure how well you can see down in there, but I'm going to just move you. Yeah, so see, the battery tray that used to be there is pretty much gone. But, like I said, I got another one, so that's pretty good. So, now I'm just going to work on pulling the grill, fenders, radiator, all that, all that annoying stuff that's in the way so that I can... Uh, you know, have access to the engine. So one thing that I'm going to be looking for for this Jeep is um, an original style air filter. Um, figure out people who are watching this, probably there's a pretty good chance you got Jeeps or a pile of Jeep parts. So if anyone has a you know, that oil bath air filter, they'd be willing to part with. And they don't want the whole world for it. Let me know. Um, I'll buy it. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you what it's worth. <clears throat> um, I know you could just put a regular little air filter on here, but part of the cool factor for these old jeeps to me is just things like that. The fact that the oil bath air filter was used on these is just, it's just cool. Hood. I want to come up with a system to organize all these bolts. Save a lot of effort on the back end. They all go right back where they were. <clears throat> Probably just put those back in their holes. Sounds like the best plan. Kind of funny, you can see on this bolt here. We got some red, we got some yellow, some blue, some green right here, and yellow. So, kind of funny to just look at, you know, how many times has this Jeep been painted? You know, people had it. And, you know, there was a time when these were just 20 year old Jeeps, and they were just, they were nothing special. They were everywhere, right? I mean, you could go anywhere and pick one up, and they weren't expensive. and. And so they got beat on, they're in hunting buggies, people wheeled them, cut them up, put engines in them. You know, they ran as a plow Jeep for decades, kind of barely starts. And then every winter you just get it fired up and just good enough to plow. So all these Jeeps had a, you know, a different story over time, which is cool to me. Um, Take the windshield off because that's just looking to fall. So I got the Jeep stripped down a bit. So I got the grill down there. Fenders, fenders are gonna need some repair. Where they bolt up to the front of the fender, it's pretty much gone. There were some crappy little pieces of angle iron there kind of beefing them up. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do here, but I'm gonna, I'll do something. I want it a little stronger than that. You see there's, that's the patch from the top. Um, and then, looks like we got another, another patch right here. I may try to, uh, you know, just cut out the bad and, Put some good in and then you can see similar similar story here on the other one same same story uh, they're really not junk i mean they're they're tired but i don't know i'm not too discouraged 
Seems kind of how I was expecting. Pulled the radiator out. The radiator still had coolant in it, which was a little surprising. Um, so it looks like it was still holding fluid. The engine's dripping right now. Uh, look at that. that. This crank has a pulley nut on the end for hand starting. That's pretty cool. That's a feature I, I just think is so cool about these old Jeeps. Is, you know, they just wanted them to be useful in a million different ways. And uh, what if you don't have a battery? You know, start it up by hand. So that's cool. Um, let's see. So really, there's not much holding the engine in now. I'm not I'm not taking too much care for wiring or fuel lines or any of that because honestly, it's all junk. It's all going to have to be replaced. I mean, this is, this is just going to be a time thing, but um, I'm going to, I might strip some big, bigger pieces off of this engine while it's like this right now, you know, and just see what, what I need to put onto this one. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Here's a better look at that serial number here on this early engine and on the frame. Now this is exposed. You can really see it. Um, so yeah, this thing is uh, shaping up a little bit. It's getting uh, closer to the point where I'm ready to pull it. It's uh, just a horrible rainy day right now. I don't know what's up with all this rain in January. We ought to be having snow. If we're going to have cold, let's at least have snow. But um, yeah, so when the weather's changed a little bit and I can... Well, I got to clean up first. I mean, I can't. It's messy. There was, you know, squirrels and chipmunks and everybody, everybody was living in this Jeep for a long time. So I messed up their houses. And But I'm, I'm happy to see, you know, frame rails pretty solid all through the top. Um, here's a better look at that spot that I believed was bad. I mean, the frame is, yeah, right there. Look at that. That's right through the frame. So that's the spot. That's the only bad spot on this frame that I found. I mean, can't be too upset. Honestly, it's, you know, this, this Jeep has been around a lot longer than me. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's just one other little thing I'm going to have to address. But the frame outside at least provides me with a how it should look. And I'm seriously considering just taking a piece from it. Um, I kind of like the idea of having as much, you know, original material as possible. And, I mean, sure, I can fabricate whatever. And, but... I don't know. I'm going to weigh my options, think about it, and, and see what the plan turns into. But anyway, this is the uh, Jeep as it stands right now. I'm having a hard time carving out a lot of time because I'm working night shift. So once I get back on to day shift, I will be back at this hard. <laughs>